Where do I start? That's the question we're going to answer today on Evidentia Answers. Hi, my name is Ed Thompson, and I am the creator of Evidentia Software and your host on Evidentia Answers. Today's question comes from Family History Diva, and it's an excellent question, which is, where do I start? And the short answer is with one source, but I'm sure you want a little more detail than that. So let's switch over to the um, uh, software program. So what I've done to answer this question is I've created a totally empty database. Now, when you first start up Evidentia, you'll get a totally empty database. And if I go over to this menu, uh, hamburger, and go to list manager, you'll see here that I have no sources created. And if I go to the identify a source screen, which is most likely the first screen you're going to work with, you'll notice that I have no sources. So now different people are going to start in slightly different ways. I usually start by entering a source on this screen. So I start with one source. I'm going to take my time with it. It might take me 15, 20 minutes to enter that one source and collect all the information that I need. But it's worth the effort and you will speed up as time goes on. However, by the time I get to the analyze or to the catalog information screen and turn that the information in the records into evidence, the question is, well, where do my subjects come from? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to a database that has some data in it. Well, no, let me do this first. So one way, and it's just one way, you do not have to do this, but one way to get subjects into your database that you want to work with is to go to the list manager screen and import, where is that, uh, where's that button? Ah, import a GEDCOM file. When you import a GEDCOM file, the only data that you're going to get is subject data or persons. Uh, there's a, a long explanation about why that is on our website, but uh, just to say that, that that's the case. And I can choose any GEDCOM file. Now here I've got a GEDCOM file that I think is just, oh, it's just one person. Let's not use that one. Um, I should have one here that's easy to get to that's, um, uh, let's see what this one is. Nope, that's just two people. Um, but you see here that by pulling in a GEDCOM file, I've, I've added subjects into my database. And when I click on those subjects, you can see them here on the list screen. So that's one way to do it. Now, a couple of caveats, actually one big caveat, do not import tens of thousands of, P of subjects that you downloaded off of Ancestry.com. There's no way in within Evidentia that you're going to be working with that many subjects at one time. And in fact, I often suggest that you have separate databases for separate projects. So as an example, I have one database for uh, my family and another database for my wife's family when I work on that. But the, the point being is uh, you don't want to pull in more than a couple thousand subjects, if even that, and I seldom pull in more than a, a couple hundred. If you do pull in thousands of records, the program's going to really crawl, and that's not what you want. Plus, you're, you're not going to be working with that many people at one time, so I don't recommend that. All right, so I'm going to go over to um, the, the little gear icon over here, and I'm going to go to Database. Now you see I have three databases here. I've got the database that I started up just for this demo. I have the default database, and then I've got the database that I actually work on with my own family history. What I want to do is switch over to the Evidentia database because I know I've got some test data in there. And everything's cleaned up. And now if I go to the subject list, you'll see I've got subjects to work with. Okay, now I am going to show uh, real quick uh, another way to add subjects because it is a topic of, of confusion with a lot of people. But let's let's go back to the initial question. Where do I start? 
you're going to start with with this screen and you're going to start with a source now I'm not going to enter in a, a source record today uh, although I will point you to some more resources that will help you with that I'm just going to look at a source record that I've worked with in the past so over here I'm going to pick an entry for the 1790 US Census for Gilmanton New Hampshire now I entered this data and if I click on it you see here I've given the source a title and I have classified it as an original record there's nothing down here there's no citation title there's no citation listing I've just created a source record and in fact if I go over here to details you'll see that there is additional information about the source this is the source listing think of it as the bibliographic listing and if I had any notes that would show up here and if I had any attachments oh I do there's an attachment and I can click on that and if I'm lucky okay <laughs> I was just testing so um, I can get to my attachments right from there now once I select a, a, a citation you see here there's only one citation for this source you see here now that the citation side of the detail screen has filled in if, and if I go back and, and go to less detail the, the three things you need before you can go past this screen is, is going to be a source title a citation title and a citation listing and what evidence is encouraging you to do is basically get the uh, hard work out of the way if if to create that citation listing you want some help you can use one of our templates um, here I'm gonna pick uh, the template for the 1790 US Census and I can say yep that's the one I want I can fill on these fields and then it, it will create a citation for me uh, in this particular case what I've done is is I freeformed it I copied and pasted it from another program into the program and I'm ready to start working with that data now I'm not going to do a heavy tutorial on this because I have several pre-recorded already and I'll point you to that in a minute but I'm just going to walk you through a couple things um, the next step that you'll do is you'll catalog your information and what that means is you will um, record the information that is in that record that you are interested in you are not at this point massaging the information you're not passing value judgment on the information you're just entering it as it is and if you want to make that a little bit easier uh, you can use the mini editor and it will stay on top of the record as you're entering data and that makes it a lot easier to enter the data without transcribing it and you can actually increase the size and kind of use it as a ruler as you're entering the data so that you enter it in properly now where people start to get lost in, the, in this process is the next step what I've got here on the left hand side is information uh, and what I got on the right hand side is evidence how do I get from information to evidence if I double click I get a tag claim pop-up and by the way I'm gonna change the name of that in the next version to assign claim but for right now it's called tag claim here you have the claim that you wanted to do and here you add a um, a claim type and a subject and you hit the add tags and then and then you're done you, you can click done and that will show if I, if I add it now I've got two things tagged to this claim and when I hit done you see I've got two things in this box Now, the thing I want to point out only because we talked about subjects was that if I want to I can add a subject from this screen so I can take hey maybe this is adoption and I, I know that I don't have um, excuse me uh, sure uh, yes working from home I, I know I don't have the ancestor I want in here so I'm gonna just add Fred Thompson uh, I always do last name first so it'll sort in the list and the key here is to hit the enter key and now you see that Fred Thompson is in a little box of his own it's gray because we don't know his gender at this time uh, and then when I add tags boom Fred Thompson and if I go back to the list manager and search for Fred you see that Fred has been added to the database and I can select his gender select his gender uh, as male done uh, and now when I look at the catalog information and click on Fred um, uh, yeah that's still not going to show up in color here 
So that's where you start. Now, once you have several sources that you focus on one source, but once you have several sources for the same screen, then you can move on to analyzing the evidence. But I'm not going to get into that in evidential answers today because this is supposed to be a uh, quick and easy answers. I do, however, want to show you some of the settings you might want to consider using. So if I go here to the gear icon again, and I'm here on the general tab, um, I can check. I, I can turn off checking for updates on startup, which you probably don't want to do. I think people are comfortable with programs communicating over the internet. You can um, ask it whether you want to, to. Do you want it to nag you about doing a backup before you leave? And there are a few other things you can do. Like you, you may not even know you can do this. Um, you can move the source list over to the right hand side of your screen. Now it's over on the right hand side of the screen. Um, if, if that's the way you prefer. But what I wanted to focus on here was on the data edit settings. And on the data edit settings, there's an option. If you, if you think about it, often when you enter a birth record or a death record or a marriage record, you're also capturing where that person lives. Now, sometimes you're not. And that the you know, I, maybe my uh, aunt got married, but they had a, a wedding in uh, Caracas, and uh, that tells me nothing about where they actually live. So what you need to decide, you can have Evidentia automatically add a residence claim when you add these kinds of records, or you can automatically have, uh, or, and, and then delete them when they're not relevant, or you can explicitly add them yourself. You need to decide for yourself which is easier, and you don't have to do anything. But let, let me turn this on for a birth and, and just show you what this looks like and cross my fingers that this still works. So I'm going to go to catalog information. I'm, I'm going to go back to this one. Uh, no, let me, let me go to this one. Um, no, it's already got a residence record. Um, let me just pull up a totally different record here. Birth and residence, resident. Okay, I was too good on these. Um, Okay, uh, residence unknown, birth, residence. Boy, I need something. Let me go back to this one because it. Okay, so th there's no birth or residence records in this one. I'm going to pretend this um, is relevant to somebody's birth. Uh, and you see here, birth and residence. And Edith, somebody, and add the tag. And you'll see here that it added the birth of Edith and the residence of Edith and boom boom they're both in the record now if i determine like oh they you know she was born away from home and i don't want this i can i can just delete um the uh, the residence entry if it's not relevant so whichever way works for you you can have uh, evidentially automatically add um uh residence facts on any of these and or you can uh and then delete the ones that are irrelevant or you can not have it add and you need to add the ones when it's relevant to that record. Okay, um, Family History Diva asks, are you going to be adding other genders? That's an excellent question. I actually hadn't considered that. Um, Evidentia is very um, LGBT friendly. Uh, so right now there's uh, there's male, female, and unknown. But you're right, I should, I should fix that. Um, and uh, the one way you'll see where it is um, friendly is, for instance, if you add a uh, parent fact, um, it's not father or mother, it's parent. Uh, if you want to look at, um, if you want to do a marriage or do a spousal fact, it's spouse, um, or uh, yeah, it's I use the word spouse, not necessarily husband and wife. So in generally, in general, the um, program is flexible along those lines. Um, but you're right, I, I hadn't thought about uh, uh, gender and gender identity in that. So that's uh, excellent. Um, 
Matthew asks, is it possible to export a GEDCOM from Evidentia to import the sources and citations into other programs like FTM or Roots Magic? You know, Matthew, that was going to be the topic of today's Evidentia answers. Uh, and then uh, Family History Diva came up with a question, and I always prioritize the questions that come from the community over the questions that come from um, I, the ones that I come up with, because that's why I'm here. But I, I think I've covered the topic of where to get started. I'll, I'll close that topic out with a short website tour. Uh, and I think I got enough time to, to show you how to do that. So if you go to evidentiasoftware.com, training and support, and I, I think you can also get to it from uh, uh, product-support, um, you'll see all our, our training materials, which includes an installation guide, a step-by-step -step guide, and the Evidentia user's guide. And the step-by-step -step guide will literally take you through the process step by step. And then I also created a PDF version of that. Where did I put it? I'm not quite sure where I put it. Um, I'll have to double check that. I, I know you may get it if you download a trial version. I may email you automatically that PDF, but it can also be downloaded in PDF format. Um, but I also wanted to point out the videos. So there's a 52 minute video that is for beginners that is a live stream that I did a while back. And it takes you from beginning to end, from entering your first record through to doing an analysis and showing some reports. If, you, if 52 minutes is a little bit long, you can look at some of these shorter videos uh, on how to get started, how to identify your source, how to tag your claims, um, variations on tagging your claims and some of the other features of Evidentia. And if you want to deep dive into one particular topic like cataloging the claims or analyzing your evidence, we have videos for that as well. So those are excellent resources for uh, the question, where do I start? So Family History Diva, I hope I've answered your question. And uh, if you have other questions, you are free to contact me on, you see the contact us uh, option on our website. And or you can also reach me on the Evidentia Software Users Group uh, Facebook group. All right, so let's go back to Matthew's question. Is it possible to export a GEDCOM from Evidentia to import the sources and citations into other programs? Now, the first thing I want to check is to see if I've got training available specifically on that. Um, and I, I don't think that I do. No, I, I don't have uh, training specifically on that topic, although I have adjusted, I think, in the blog. But um, let me show you how to do that real quick. So um, what I'm going to do is I am going to let me let me reload the database so that I, I know what I'm working with. Yes, I know. You're going to delete all my data. Don't threaten me. Uh, I'm going to load that file. And it's imported. And yeah, I got all these sources to work with. Okay. So after the point that I've analyzed my data, so um, let's say I've come here and I've got a subject, and I'm going to choose my, uh, let's turn, choose Daniel. Oops. Uh, I think I've got some information on Daniel Hart. And if I click on this, you'll see that I have proofs about Daniel's birth. These are, these are all the claim types that I have at least, uh, that I have proofs started on. Now, it doesn't mean those proofs are uh, completed. But the point I want to make is, um, you can only export data that where you've completed a proof. Okay, so I can't just take. I, I'm not going to be taking all this data and exporting it into a GEDCOM file and, and, and importing it if it's not complete, if it hasn't been through the whole process. Now, in the future, I may uh, loosen up on that a bit and make it real clear that you, you're kind of going against the process, but allow you to do that. But for right now, you can only export. Sport the, 
you can only export data related to proofs. Now, if I choose his birth proof, yeah, see, if I, these check marks would be green if I had completed it, and I would have a conclusion here. So let me pick something else where I know I have that. And I look at David Thompson, and select the claim type, and I know I've got something on his birth. And you'll, you'll see here that I've got a, a very thorough um, uh, conclusion written. All my check marks are green here for an analyzing all of the data. And I could run a proof report. Um, I can run a proof report with complete data or no. But um, Now, the one thing that will block this, however, I think, is I have it as inconclusive because I really don't have enough data on that. But let me, let me uncheck that my choice and you see here I've got his birth date as uh, between November 21st 1755 and November 21st 1756 and I believe his his birthplace was Salisbury Mass so that's one proof that I have and that's for one ancestor David Thompson now the other thing is you can only export data for one person at a time this is not a batch processing program. And I, I think I've got some information about that on the blog. Um, uh, Carolyn Rutherford, why is this Chrome extension required to access your website? Um, there is no required extension, Carolyn. I, I don't know what's going on with your Chrome. Um, it's just a normal website. You shouldn't need to load anything. Um, so let's see. Uh, nope. Um, so I'm going to pick, go back to our hamburger menu, and I'm going to go to the report manager. And you see here the last tab in the report manager is a JEDCOM. And I'm going to choose David again. Now, there's a lot of different ways to export the analysis that you did in Evidentia and to export the conclusion that you made in Evidentia. So Evidentia gives the uh, ability to choose where you want the analysis to go. I like to put it in a citation note field, but it could be in a fact note field. Uh, it could be a separate event or fact in and of itself, or it could just be a note attached to the person in general. And I like the conclusion to go into the fact note, okay? Um, but those are, uh, those are personal choices for me. I think they make the most logical sense. Um, but um, I'm going to select done. Did I mean to do done? I did not mean to do done. Sorry about that. I meant to do hit the uh, button. Let's see. Uh, David. Thompson and export JEDCOM. And it's just called JEDCOM.JED. And I'm going to overwrite the one that's there. That's fine. I can name it whatever I want, but I'm just going to leave it. All right. Now um, I'm going to go back here. Uh, Joy, yeah. If uh, some of you could double check the website and see if you're having any problems getting to it, Carolyn Rutherford in the chat is having an issue uh, getting to the program. Uh, getting to the website and uh, uh, there should not be any kind of uh, Chrome extension required to get it's just a normal website um, I'll, I'll come back around to that after I do this to see if uh, I can help resolve that issue uh, okay so I've got a JEDCOM file now I'm, I'm gonna have to open up uh, I'm gonna use Roots Magic just because I can do it the fastest um, Let's see here. And is my screen small enough for that? I, I have things kind of blown up here a little bit uh, so it shows up better on the screen. But so I have a couple of options. If I go down here um, in Roots Magic, I can navigate, and you see here that I, I've already got David. Uh, where do I already have David? So I've, I've already got David added here. Um, I can double click on him, and you see I've, I've got some facts for David. Uh, including birth fact already. And uh, so the, the, those things that I already have for David. Now, I have two options. And 
Either way, there's going to be some sort of merge involved. So either you can merge it directly into this database, okay? Um, and I think Roots Magic will, will do well to merge the data. Or you can merge it into an empty database and see exactly what records have been created for you. And then you could merge the two databases. And that's what I'm going to do this time because it's a little more visually uh, shows you what's going on. So I'm going to go File. Uh, let's see, how do I create a new database? New. Uh, new file. Uh, I'm just going to call it temp. I don't care about any of that. And you, you see here now I've, I've got a brand new database. Um, I'm going to close. Well, I won't. I'll just minimize it and maximize that one. All right, so I'm going to go up here to Roots Magic and import a GEDCOM file from another program. Uh, I know where the file is, so you don't have to go looking for it for me. And do I know where the file is? Uh, wrong place. Let's see. Um, oh, I know where it is. It's in my uh, apps folder for... Uh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Now, I, I'm not going to get into all the features of importing GEDCOMs into... Roots Magic. I will be doing a, um, over on the Genealogy Software Showcase, I will be doing an episode on how to do those things, um, but I, I, I'm, I'm not going to do that here. So, uh, let me say OK. And you see here now I have an entry for David Thompson. And let's take a look at that entry. Okay. So I have a birth entry for David Thompson now. Uh, and it has uh, notes, and this this note is my summary, because if you remember back on Roots Persona, I said I want my conclusion summary to be in the fact note. Now, but where did my analysis go? Well, if I look down here to sources, you see that I've imported nine sources related directly to his birth, and under each source in the notes section is my analysis of that um, specific source. So that is uh, basically how you would do it. Now, in this is going to be different in different programs, but if I, I'm going to close this. Um, and actually, let me, let me just do it a different way. Let me close that. And I'm, let me import it into this uh, database. So I'm going to import. I haven't done this for a while, so I'm assuming I'm not going to embarrass myself. Uh, there's the GEDCOM for David. Combine it. So I didn't even have to create the new database first. Um, I'm going to combine it into this database. And now when I go to David, when I go to David and pull him up, <coughs> You'll see now that, um, well, let's see, where did the birth record go? Um, yeah, so, uh, is that true? It's two birth sources. No, where did, oh, I haven't merged David with David yet. So, um, let me go and f I think I go to lists, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, let's see, search, tools merge, duplicate search merge, I'm going to do a manual merge, and um, I'm going to select David Thompson as my primary person and select David Thompson as my uh, secondary person. Is this the right one? No, that's the one I'm working with. And this is the one based on the um, uh, more complete date that I imported. I'm going to select that. Okay. And let's see. I'm going to merge those two. Um, I'm going to leave this one as the primary. And I'm going to close this. And now when I go back to David. Oops. 
We'll see. I guess because it's maximized. Um, you'll see that now there's two birth facts, okay, which I, it could manually merge, but there's two birth facts. And when I click on that, you'll see that there are nine um, birth sources. Now, one of the things that um, didn't happen automatically is some of those sources I imported are duplicate sources. And I haven't checked on whether or not um, there's a merge sources option in uh, in Roots Magic. So, um, and I'm not going to do that right now. But that is one of the one of the challenges now is I do have duplicate sources out there, uh, the ones that I just imported and the ones that were already there. And that's something I have to clean up. And basically, you have to do that time any time that you import a JetCom file that has sources. So, so uh, the answer to your question, uh, Matthew, is yes. You can export a JetCom file with persons that have proofs, and it will export that person. It will export the supporting sources, your analysis, and your proof summary. Okay. Um, uh, Carolyn asks, I uh, love that analysis gets pulled into Roots Magic. Does it on Legacy also? Um, the short answer is yes. It really depends on how, it has nothing to do with um, Evidentia. That has to do with how those programs handle JetCom data. And all the top programs, I, I mean, I've done demonstrations where I've done it with um, uh, Legacy, I've done it with Family Tree Maker. I've done it with Family Historian, and those videos are out there um, uh, it, for you to do. Now, some people handle that by just copying and pasting from Evidentia into uh, Roots Magic or whatever their tree builder software of choice is. Uh, that's a personal choice. The other thing that you could do is you could generate a proof um, report and then attach that proof report as a source. And then it will include all of your analysis and all the records that you, it won't, won't insert individual source records, but it, it will include the references to those other sources in the proof report. But in, in that instance, the, it's the proof report that becomes the source. So that is another option um, that you have. And hopefully there'll be more, um, Evidence in the future. Um, in which magic or other program do you merge yourself? So yeah, I demonstrated two different ways that you can do that. I like to merge it myself, um, but seeing that it does it relatively cleanly, uh, it, it did not auto merge. Now I think sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. And again, that depends on the other program that you're working with. So uh, let's see. Uh, Carolyn, did you resolve the issue with the website? Because um, I think that's our only other question today. Um, so we were able to handle two big topics today on Evidentia Answers. Where do I start? And um, can I export a JetCom file? Um, one of the things I want to encourage you to do, if, if you like what you see here and want me to continue to do these kind of topics, uh, evidentiary answers, please on YouTube, uh, like and subscribe. That lets me know that you're enjoying the content and what kind of content to continue to provide. And it's a, it's actually a, a nice way to say thank you for the, uh, for the time to any content creator to either uh, subscribe if you want more like it. And even if you don't want to subscribe to like the videos you Enjoy. Um, Carolyn's saying she's the wrong URL. Okay, great. Thank, and thank you, Joy, for helping Carolyn. Um, so again, uh, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you have other questions you'd like to see in Evidentia Answers, I've not come up with a topic yet for next week. So uh, post it in our Facebook group or you can email me directly. So until next week, have some fun. Thank <laughs> you.